It's time for Over There with Mirella Rostrofer. Mirella is our European correspondent. She joins us weekly. She's over there somewhere. I'm going to guess Switzerland, but in one second, just one second, ladies and gentlemen, she's going to tell me how I did. Hi, Mirella. How are you? Hi, Jill. How are you? Yes, absolutely right. From Switzerland, uh, but uh, back from France. So I will definitely uh, talk to you about France today. Uh, before that, uh, I just want to uh, quickly mention that today is the first uh, day of the World Economic Forum in uh, Davos, in the Swiss Alps. Um, there is uh, at the moment not much to say as uh, today is the opening day. Um, there has been a, the, uh, an introduction by uh, our current Swiss president, Uli Maurer, who um, basically um, said um, that a dialogue between elites and people is the only way to shape the actual globalization or a form of globalization that one cannot really stop anymore. Uh, but at least uh, there must be um, some understanding from uh, between the elites and, and the people in order to succeed uh, and, uh, and and go ahead with it. Um, these are words, of course, and uh, uh, one would have to see how to implement that, but this is the introduction. Um, I have been told that the mood is, uh, is not so high as there are many issues that are going to be discussed about. Um, there is, of course, the environment. Uh, it is definitely not a side uh, topic anymore. Um, there is the different trade wars that are taking place. Um, there is the Brexit. Um, uh, there is the situation uh, in Europe altogether um, in, 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 in a way um, trying to keep Europe, uh, Europe uh, altogether. So there will be um, uh, many, many topics, many issues um, about Europe, about uh, the world, uh, of course, um, that is uh, not only um, about what's happening over here, it's about what's uh, happening everywhere. Um, there is a little bit of a paradox, though, because obviously this uh, World Economic Forum is very much about um, making connection, uh, about uh, uh, trying to get to know the right people in order to get also the right deals. Uh, so it's very much business oriented, but the talks and the discussions are very much issues and problems oriented and uh, very often um, one has uh, the feeling that uh, those two entities are not necessarily taken into consideration together. But maybe there will be more to say um, about this uh, next week. In the meantime, um, I wanted to talk about uh, the yellow vest um, because I uh, was in Paris and I could, um, uh, I was uh, given the possibility to talk to uh, a few people and to see how Paris transforms literally on Saturdays. Um, it's like the entire week, it's basically uh, business as usual. And on Friday afternoon, uh, things suddenly begin to change. Um, you, you, you will meet more police. Uh, they are uh, tanks around, uh, they are uh, streets that one cannot walk uh, into anymore, um, they are more controls and um, the atmosphere becomes very surreal. Um, some uh, shops decide to put uh, protection 
uh, for their uh, windows, others uh, just uh, close and others decide to just go through it as if nothing is really happening. So there are different attitudes there. Uh, but all together, it's uh, definitely all of a sudden a kind of time capsule where uh, Paris is not the same anymore, at least the center of Paris. Um and other cities in France, of course, but Paris is what I saw. Um, and and there, uh, people um, just are much more careful. And also, every time uh, on Fridays, wondering how this Saturday is going to uh, impact life in Paris. And also um, business, because obviously, for example, now it's uh, uh, the sales and shops uh, uh, usually do a um, uh, substantial uh, part of their um, uh, business in uh, during those sales periods. So it does it does matter if people are able to go to Paris uh, and and buy, or if people are afraid to suddenly be involved in uh, some um, manifestation. Um, so last Saturday, the ninth, the nineteenth, um, according to the French government, there were eighty four thousand yellow vests um, in uh, in France, um, and according to the gilets jaunes themselves, uh, they were uh, one hundred and forty seven thousand. So of course those numbers are very different, but this is something we know. It's um, it's it's basically always the same, uh, but it does matter. It's not it's not just a joke because it it has an influence on motivation, and uh, if the uh, so-called gilet jaune feel that um, they have enough. Um, people behind them that they are uh, you know that they are not isolated then uh, it's certainly more motivating than uh, feeling that uh, like the government says that every saturday it's uh, getting less and less uh, in paris only there were uh, 7000 uh, people demonstrating um and it went it went fairly well um, there is always a little bit of violence, sometimes more, sometimes less, but it's certainly something that is debated on both sides. The government says that the yellow vests are incredibly dangerous and violent with uh, the police forces. Um, and the yellow vest uh, say exactly the opposite, uh, that the violence uh, from the police officers is um, out of line, uh, not necessary and, and, and very damaging, as many people uh, have been uh, really badly hurt. Um, now it's the time of the big national, national debate that President Macron has um, uh, has announced um, it's taking place uh, all over France and it's supposed to bring on the table the real worries of the people so that the government can act upon those um, those worries and those realities that are in in fact uh, really unfair for so many French people. And this is what I wanted to add to that, is that by talking to um, people in Paris, um, people that, some that have uh, financial um, problems, others that don't, they all had something in common though, and um, this, is, this, this was maybe the most surprising, is that at core, they believe that this movement is justified. Um, they all think that um, over the years, uh, many issues have not been dealt with, that too many people are struggling, 
that not enough is made to help and to basically build a society where, uh, yes, some people have more, others have less, but at the same time, there is there must be a certain fairness. And this is what many French people I talked to uh, felt was not the case. Um, where uh, then many of them don't agree anymore, it's the level of violence that is used and maybe also the fact that the yellow vest, um, some of them at least do not really want to discuss or to talk. Uh, what they really want is Macron démission. Basically, they want uh, their president gone and everything that is suggest or everything that is government is trying to suggest in order to help um, is, uh, is refused automatically. Uh, so one gets the feeling that they are um, different um, positions in the yellow vest by now. And I think their future will depend on, on how much they are able to basically uh, be together and have uh, a, and have a position. Um, some are more flexible and they want a discussion, they want a dialogue, they want to discuss and they want to see if it's possible to move something. And another uh, position is the one of those who don't believe in the elites, who believe that uh, ev every word is meant, nothing is just meant to uh, make them uh, uh, have patience while basically nothing is ever going to end. Um, so the interesting conclusion of that would be uh, how is that movement going to uh, evolve? Um, is there going to be a real political party coming out of this movement or is it going to be a, a pure opposition? One thing is certain is that uh, uh, many French people of all um, social status believe that change is necessary. Um, I guess that's probably what is uh, the, the, the main driving force behind this movement. But now the question is how those changes are going to be made. Is this big national debate uh, announced and, uh, by uh, President Macron going to also be followed by, um, by action? Or is that going to remain some kind of intellectual debate? Um, I guess this is, this is really what's going to be uh, the, the turning point um, to know what's going to happen in France next. Um, right now, I think they are going. They are having heavy snow um, on the, in France, including Paris. That might have also an impact on uh, on the next uh, on next Saturday. Um, but from what I could uh, gather in uh, in Paris. Um, I think that movement is, or that unhappiness is there to stay. And if President Macron doesn't make some radical changes to answer uh, to those real needs, um, the surprise might come uh, for the next presidential election or even for the next European elections, and um, and 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 that's that's a point that uh, naturally cannot be ignored, because those move movements, while um, having um, a good good goals in mind, are also, of course. Uh, used and misused by uh, both extremes on the right and on the left. Thank you very much, Mirella Rastrofer. Over there. My pleasure.